So in today's session, I'll be doing a short introduction and background uh, for the reason for creating this open source library tool that we have, even though we already have a tool in place called Neosemantics. And then I'm going to compare the different capabilities and functionalities between RDF Live Neo4j and Neosemantics. And finally, I'm going to end, we're going to end strong with a short demo uh, demonstrating how you can use this tool and give you a feel for it. Uh, but before jumping to that, uh, who am I, right? So my name is Alexander Simonovic, and I'm part of the professional services team here at EMEA, helping Neo4j customers in Europe with, you know, full stack Neo4j development, everything from infrastructure to, you know, data loading and writing data, the cipher queries and data modeling all the way to the front end using customization visualization tools uh, such as NeoDash. Uh, I'm based in Malmö, Sweden. Uh, and it's crazy to say, but I've been here for uh, for two years now at Neo4j. Uh, so time flies really fast. Um, so that that's a little bit about me. Uh, I wanted to do a quick reminder because I think that 90% of the people joining this call know what RDF is. But for the 10% that don't or accidentally jump on this call, I want to give you an ROI of your uh, investment time here at this session. So RDF, or Resource Description Framework, is a framework for structuring and representing data on the web and has been part of the Semantical Web Initiative for a decade or plus. Um, and it's a graph-based model for, you know, allowing for flexible and interconnected data relationship. And what RDF does, it, it uses triples, so our, which are the statements in the form of subject, predicate, and object. So as you can see from my low resolution picture here at the bottom, I have a graphical representation of uh, RDF triples, where at the top you see in the example org uh, index HTML, we have the subject, then we have three outgoing relationships, um, which are represented by a predicate, and then we have uh, objects. Uh, and object can be two different things. It could be literals, as you see in the creation data language, or it could be another resource that we see in the step ID. So this is just a quick uh, reminder of what RDF is and how it's constructed. Now for some story time. So as you all know, probably know, uh, Neo Semantics has been the go-to tool for you know ingesting RDF data into the label property graph world uh, that is Neo4j. Uh, what you also can do is you can also export uh, data from Neo4j back to RDF in triples. But that is only if you have in configured a new semantics that you can do a lossless uh, data ingestion. And semantics is very mature. It has great capabilities. But there is one small limitation with new semantics, and that is that it only works on self-hosted deployments. So that if customers want to ingest RDF data into Neo4j uh, on Aura, and you might ask yourself, what is Aura? Well, Aura is Neo4j's cloud-native, fully-managed graph database service. So uh, everyone wants to go cloud first, right? So this is our uh, cloud cloud offering. Um, so as you can see, there is a gap in the ecosystem here. Uh, and we believe that um, this gap is being filled by RDF Lib Neo4j. That was the whole purpose and the story behind uh, creating this open source library tool. I want to step back and compare a little bit uh, Neo Semantics functionality versus RDF Lib functionality. So Neo Semantics has been around for quite some time, and it's been the original RDF toolkit uh, for Neo4j. It's a Neo4j Labs project, which means that uh, it's free, it's open source, and it, it complements the Neo4j product suit. Uh, been around uh, since 2016 and developed by a dear colleague of mine, Chris Barasa. Big shout out to you. Um, and RDF Lib is the next evolution of RDF tooling. And we started developing uh, this earlier this year, so it's quite new. Neo Semantics is a server side uh, plugin where you have to install it on the server. And then it's language agnostic, so meaning that whatever language you're deciding to implement your data ingestion in, as long as it has a Neo4j driver connecting to Neo4j, you're good to go. Uh, while you're more limited in the options of RDF Lib Neo4j because it's a client-side Python library. As I mentioned earlier, Neo Semantics is self-hosted on in, in, uh, works only on self-hosted Neo4j deployments, while RDF Lib works both on self-hosted deployments and on Aura, which is very important to, to note here. Um, Neo Semantics, as I mentioned earlier, has import and export capabilities and functionalities where you can configure a lot of stuff and import data in a different ways. Uh, RDF Lib doesn't have the export functionalities yet, 
that is uh, soon to come, I hope. Uh, but we have actually imported uh, and implemented most of the uh, import functionalities that semantics have. And we have tried to do it like a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, thing where most of the configuration, the new semantics can be translated to, to RDF lib. So people with knowledge about new semantics uh, already has some knowledge transfer uh, when using the RDF lib new 4 j tool. Um, Shekel validation and inferencing is available in new semantics, while on the other side, uh, what's really cool about RDF lib new 4 j is that it's based on another famous Python library called RDF lib. And uh, RDF lib, you can have different backends. And, and you know, if you're doing data ingestion uh, through RDF lib to, let's say, Postgres, if you have a pipeline for that, the only thing you can do now is that you don't have to change your pipeline. The only thing you have to change uh, is using RDF lib neo 4 j and change the store implementation of that. And you, and you can basically reuse the entire code base and ingest data into uh, Neo4j instead. So there's a little differences between the two, uh, two libraries and tools. Uh, one important thing also to note here that I didn't put in the slide was that RDF lib works only for Neo4j 5 versions, while NeoSemantics works for uh, both uh, 4 versions and 5 versions. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so how do you get started with using RDF lib Neo4j? So there are two prerequisites. Uh, requisites that you need to have in place uh, before uh, being able to use the library. One is on the Neo4j side, which is partly true, which I'll come to in a minute. And that is that you have to create a uniqueness constraint uh, for the URIs um, uh, before being able to ingest data into Neo4j. And that is the exactly the same thing you have to do for when using NeoSemantics. So uh, it's nothing new here. What's new here, and what's what I, which is why I mentioned partially true, is that you can also do this on the client side because on the client side there's a function for opening the store, and we have a parameter there, uh, a boolean parameter, uh, and if you set that to true, uh, the client side will uh, that function will create that uh, constraint for you. And the next thing that you need on the Python side is that you need to run pip install rdf libmin for j. And that's it. You're good to go. You can start using the tool. You can start doing ingestion and everything else. And now let me show, do a short demo about how this library works. So I've created a collab um, where I want to show different things. And I have also an R instance in place. So as you can see, it's empty. The only thing I've done to speed up the process is that I've already created the uniqueness constraint prior, prior to the session to speed up the, uh, the presentation. So that is already in place, and I've already run uh, pip install RDF lib neo4j, so I'm good to go. So in this cell, what I'm doing here is I am fetching some stuff from the library. I'm fetching the neo4j store configuration, uh, the neo4j store itself, and some vocabulary URI strategies. And these strategies, uh, as I mentioned, are the same as we have in NeoSemantics. So it shouldn't be that, that much new stuff going on around here. Also, I'm importing some very uh, important components from the RDF lib, such as namespace, graph, uh, and other stuff. So usually how you work with this library is that you need to create your configurations of how you want your data to be ingested into Neo4j. So you need to define custom prefixes if you want them. We have some default prefixes uh, implicitly, uh, like RDFS and SCOS. Uh, but if you want some custom prefixes, uh, you need to define them here, as I do here in this dictionary, where you provide the value, the name of the prefix you want. And the value will be the URI, uh, the namespace of the URI. After that, you need to provide the Neo4j credentials uh, to uh, connect to your uh, R instance or on-prem uh, instance. And, and with this, you are providing these all these uh, configurations into the Neo4j store config when you're initializing and creating your Neo4j config. So as you see here, I'm providing the authentication data for Neo4j. I'm providing my custom prefixes. And I'm providing my uh, vocabulary URI strategy, which is set to ignore, which means that I'm, doing a, I'm throwing away the namespaces and only keeping the local names uh, in Neo4j. And I've set batching set to false. Uh, but I'll show you later on uh, a, a way to do it when we have batching set to true. So batching is available. 
Um, and from this point forward, people that are familiar with RDF lib uh, know what's about to happen. It's exactly the same as using RDF lib. So it's basically you provide, you create your store by provi providing the new store config. You're creating your graph by providing the store. Let me run this. And now I want to import data by pass by reference, passing a URL. So I'm providing a file path to the data that I want to ingest. Um, and this is the data that I want to ingest. I don't want to go into too much details, but I have four triples uh, that will be represented as plugins, nodes that will be having a relationship to Neo4j. So if I run this cell and import the data, and if I go to my Neo4j instance, run it here and visualize it, you see that now that I've ingested the triples, RDF triples in a graph where I have a Neo4j node with three incoming relationships called runs on and the nodes uh, with the Neo4j plugin uh, label uh, called APOC, NeoSemantics, and GraphQL with some properties on them, uh, re release date, URI, and what version they are. So that is one way to ingest data by passing a URL. If you want to ingest data by individually passing triples, you can use the RDF lips functions add, add function, uh, as in this cell where I am providing the U a custom URI ref called AuraDB and giving it the label uh, variable name Aura. Uh, then I'm doing three calls to uh, three add calls: uh, one for creating the label, one for creating a property label, and one for creating a relationship to Neo4j. So you see here, I'm providing the new 4 j source that I had from this data set here. So if we run this and go back to our nicely lovely graph and re refresh it, we see that we get a new node called AuraDB with a new relationship called broader pointing to the new 4 j resource here. So these are just examples of how you can um, import data with this new tool, um, not using batching. Um, another and final example that I want to show is how you can import RDF generated by a Sparkle query uh, together with batching. Um, so in this scenario here, I'm having an endpoint and I'm having a Sparkle query which I won't go into detail what it does, but it does some filtering and some union uh, things. And then again, I'm defining my configuration and the configuration is exactly the same configuration I had in the cell above. The only difference here is that I have setting, set batching to true, which is the only difference. Uh, and then I am doing the, exactly the same thing as I did before. I'm creating the new for j store, providing the configuration. I'm creating the graph, providing the new 4 store. Then I'm doing a request to the endpoint uh, and providing uh, the Sparkle query and what format I want the data to be in, which is turtle. I get back a query response with the data. And then I'm using RDF libs parse method to ingest data into Neo4j uh, in the turtle format. And then finally, uh, an important note um, is the line that I need to close the store. And the reason I need to close the store is because I've set batching to true. So how the library works is that if I'm not setting the batching to true, uh, that will mean that some of the triples won't be flushed and committed to Neo4j. So it's very important to note that when you're using batching, you always have to close the store. So if I run this, um, it will take a couple of seconds. And you'll see also that we have a printout that uniqueness constraint is found. And you see also that we have uh, information about how many triples we have ingested. So, and you see that we got more label, uh, more more, uh, more uh, nodes and relationships in the graph. So if I refresh this, we see that we have two disjunct graphs from our early ingestion and the new graph that we ingested using uh, Sparkle Query, which is a data set of different pathogens and um, some medical data. Um, yeah, so, so that's basically it. Um, thank you everyone. And if you have any questions,
feel free to try out the tool. And if you have any questions or you find any bugs or feature requests, please go to the repository and create issues or feature requests. We're happy to have a look at them. And, uh, and uh, thank you so much for joining the session. Um,